This video kicks off our Nobel Prizes Explain series, where we go back in time and explain every single Nobel Prize in medicine or physiology. We'll talk about its discovery, its history, and more importantly, its medical significance. And we'll start all the way back in 1901. But before we can talk about that, we have to talk about diphtheria. And that sounds like a hard left turn, but I'll tell you why it's important in a second. Now, diphtheria is an infectious disease caused by the bacteria Corynobacterium diphtheriae. Symptoms start off kind of mild, like a common cold. You get a fever, you get a <coughs> cough, you get a sore throat. But as that disease progresses, you get this kind of iconic gray lining in the back of your mouth and your throat, your, your larynx and your pharynx. And that's what we medical professionals look out for. We call it a gray pseudomembrane. Why do we call it a gray pseudomembrane? A little, a little fun fact for you. A membrane is a thin lining of cells. This isn't a thin lining of cells. It's actually a thin lining of waste product and protein. So we can't call it a membrane. We call it a pseudomembrane. A little trivia fact. As that progresses, you can get swelling of the throat, you can get airway obstruction. That's not good. It can affect the muscles of your body. Your heart's a muscle. You can get inflammation of the heart. It can affect your nerves. You get neuritis, pain, paralysis. And most of the damage caused by diphtheria is caused by the toxin it excretes called diphtheria toxin. What a fitting name. It can spread very quickly through direct contact or through the air. <coughs> and in the 1900s, it affected up to a million people. It caused the deaths of tens of thousands. The mortality rate was somewhere between 5 and 20 percent. However, after the introduction of the vaccine and its widespread use, we had essentially eliminated it in the developed world. In 2004 to 2011, zero, goose egg, zero cases were found in the United States. Worldwide, less than 5,000. Now, there's been a recent uptick of vaccine-preventable diseases, but for the most part, during that time, we had eliminated it in the United States. Who was responsible for such a drastic turnaround of basically diphtheria deaths? Enter Emil Bering. Emil Bering was a German Prussian doctor born in 1854. One of 13 kids. His parents couldn't afford his education probably because there were 13 kids. So he joined the Army Medical College of Berlin. That allowed him to get his medical degree, but it also required him to serve in the military, which he did. He was serving in the military and he saw infectious diseases that affected both civilians and military members. And this led him to fight against these infectious diseases. He would start developing antiseptic techniques, make sure everybody's much more clean, and that prevented the spread of disease. And that got the who said, Baron, you're doing such a good job, we want to send you to the Institute of Hygiene, which is a fantastic name, at the University of Marburg to fight against this infectious disease that's causing so much problem, you guessed it, diphtheria. So he went to the Institute of Hygiene to fight against diphtheria. And at that time, it was already known that diphtheria toxin was what caused the problem. Because if you took a bunch of diphtheria bacteria and you filtered out all the bacteria, what was left of toxins still caused a lot of damage if you injected an animal. So the fact that diphtheria causes damage through toxins was already known at the time. But it gave Bering kind of a eureka light bulb moment. He thought, well, if you inject bacteria into people or animals, they develop an immune response, antibodies against that bacteria. Well, if you inject the toxins into people or animals, do they develop antitoxins? So that's what he did. He grabbed a bunch of diphtheria toxins and started injecting, injecting it into animals, horses mainly. And sure enough, they developed antitoxins. And when he took those antitoxins and re-injected them, he found out that it not only cured diphtheria, but it would immunize horses and prevent diphtheria. So he essentially invented a cure and an immunization to diphtheria. He would publish his work in 1890, shortly after they started making diphtheria vaccines, and the rest is history. And for his work in developing the diphtheria vaccine, he was awarded the first Nobel Prize ever in 1901. That's the story of diphtheria, diphtheria vaccine. Now, question to the audience. Recently, there's been an anti-vaccination movement. What do you think has caused this? What do you think is behind this? What do you think we can do? about it. We as medical professionals and we as non-medical professionals can do about it. Whatever you think, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, hit like. Otherwise, I don't know if I'm doing a good job or not. If you want to see more of this series, again, I'm doing every single Nobel Prize in medicine or physiology. Hit the subscribe button and click somewhere here for another video in the series. Thank you.